Hello, Halet Nation, and welcome to the RV Nerd Herd to a 12,300 pound plus minus, depending on how it's equipped, Wolfpack 325 fifth wheel toy hauler here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This has been far and away our most popular big fifth wheel toy hauler here for years. And there's a lot of reasons for it, and it has gotten better than ever. Let's take a quick look with our floor plan in a flash. This gives us all the features you're looking for in a big fifth wheel toy hauler, just without all the budget that usually comes with a big fifth wheel toy hauler. We've got things like a 12 foot garage, 102 inch wide body, opposing living room slides, standard dual 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet AC units, uh, a camp king bed that's easily upgradable to a true king, a uh, battery tending Cherokee juice pack solar package, all power jacks, good pass through storage outside, and we have this one outfitted with a very cool option the Forest River exclusive Yamaha 5500 inverter generator package that we are really excited about here at Halet RV because we are a Yamaha generator dealer. We can work on these. So not only can we do all the camper work on something like this, we are even certified to be able to work on the generator for you. It has a little key fob remote control. So if you're just sitting in bed at night in the middle of the boonies and nowhere, you want to kick on the AC, you can basically like uh, almost like a, you know, a car key fob. Kick on your generator, listen to the AC kick on, roll over, go back to bed. Now that's optional. We will build this both ways. What's really cool about the Yamaha generators on these though, they weigh less, they cost less, they uh, cost less to work on, they use less fuel. They, they're a really, really awesome addition to the Wolfpack lineup. But again, we'll bring some in both ways. So if what you're looking for is a big rig on a budget, well, we'll have something for you too. I think I've talked enough. I tend to be long-winded. Let's let me shut up and get inside here. One of the things I like to do for you here at Halet RV is show you our uh, campers in travel mode. And uh, you'll get to see the interior with the slides closed at the end of our interior tour. I actually wanted to start our detail portion of our tour today with the garage closed coming from the inside. Like we're looking at the, the tail right now. So that you get an, kind of an idea of the kind of loading space you're going to get here. Because one of the big things with any toy hauler is how much room do I have? And the cool thing about Wolfpack is they tell you the garage size basically in their model numbers. It's, this is a 325 pack 12. It has a 12 foot garage. Now something you got to keep in mind. That is 12 foot from the front wall that we just walked away from to here. You will lose about six to nine inches depending on how well you have that tied down and compressed with the uh, ramp patio party package right there. But good news is you could always remove that if you are not so inclined. Now I can hear our check-in guys actually getting ready to drop that door. So we will actually hop out on the patio party deck and see you from the other direction, I think. Now I know that my video tours tend to run very long, guys. I, I do believe that if you are a a serious buyer of an RV like this, you'll appreciate the information. But I also believe that you're smart folks. And if you want to know each and everything that the uh, the Happy Jack bed lift system and, and side sofa systems can do here, give us a call. Uh, we've got other videos like a 315 Wolfpack where I've done that in great, great detail. Apparently I'm a Jedi using the force on that bathroom door over there, or it's just a windy day. But I'm just gonna kind of give you a more brief view of this. So we have a 12 foot wide body garage with 15 tie downs. It's dovetailed in the back here. The uh, garage flooring has about a 3000 pound load rating, which is basically standard in fifth wheel toy haulers because the ramp has a 3000 pound load rating. That makes sense. You might notice that this RV has an actual backup camera on it. Near the end of the video, I'll explain why that's there and why it may not be uh, on one that we have in stock. So these can ride against the wall. They can ride horizontally parallel under that overhead queen bed that can drop down. That can give us sleeping for four adults back here. These benches can give us seating for six adults. There's a floating table that can go in here or you can just leave it wide open for big time loading and storage space like this. Now, toy hauler is good for more than just hauling toys. Actually, I don't, I, I don't really like that name, toy hauler. I think that it, it pigeonholes these things and shoehorns them into uh, a role that maybe they're not only good for. Yes, can you load a side by side or some Harleys or Gold Wings or anything you want back in here? Sure, kayaks, you could do that. Bicycles, dog crates. There's a lot you could do here. You can see that it has a combo washer dryer prep station right there. I love that big smoky glass door. Nice big wide door to take you up into the living space. And for privacy, 
you have these snap-on blackout shades right here. And what's kind of cool is, you know, just as the name implies, if you want to make sure that if you're sleeping in here, nobody can see you, or if you don't want somebody seeing what's inside your hauler so they're not inclined to maybe come look at it, mess with it, gives you the peace of mind to know they can't see it. And by the way, both sides of the Happy Jack bed have household and USB plugs readily available, and they're positioned so that when that queen bed comes down, it will basically rest kind of right in between them. So you'll still be able to use either plug from top or bottom space, which is pretty darn nice actually. And by the way, this is the easier set system where if you want to drop or leave locked up the upper queen bed, there's just these little latches here. You flip it one way to drop uh, this thing, you flip it the other way to leave it locked up in place. So by actually lifting the sofas, you will engage or disengage the lock up there. It's simple, it's great. It's I like the way that they do that. And this is a bath and a half loft model. This is like a model that just does all of the things. And this is a good example of what Wolfpack does. They do important things where it matters. They ignore things that are maybe just preferential that would just ding the price tag. So we've got nice porcelain foot flush stools in both the main bathroom and here in the half bath. They didn't really have space for a normal sink. So they used kind of one of those uh, simple corner often used in the shower of like a wolf pup little sink jobs and you know what it's fine it is big enough to get a set of hands in there to clean yourself and then to hop out so you can have your bathroom hands clean before you're gripping all over the doorknobs and stuff like that nice little breeze window in here and of course it does have privacy say uh, privacy oh i almost got through this without flubbing too bad privacy shades if you're so inclined gosh dang it i was so close and I tell you, one of the things I've really always liked about Wolf Packs is they never had that diamond plate barbed wire and blowtorch extreme kind of interior. It just looks like a nice camper in here. It looks just like a nice, comfortable fifth wheel. It's low key. It's warm. It's the kind of place where after I go running around for the day, I just want to sit down, you know, grab a bite to eat, watch a show, have a drink with friend or fam family or a little bit of both. You know, that's there. It's just very... I don't know, it speaks to me in that way. Now, one of the other things that's really nice over here is we have this one outfitted with the Cherokee juice pack option. In the upper right corner of the screen, you see that little voltage monitor. Think of it like a gas tank for your battery. It's telling us how much juice is remaining on that battery. And when I was doing all my stuff earlier, it was at 11.9 volts. We're flirting between 12.2 and three. So it's actually charging up and you can see it when we go outside, there's some sun, but there's some clouds too today. Now their master control panel, easy to reach right here, and it has a hidden version of the LCI-1 control system. You can actually basically just scan that QR code within the LCI-1 control app and it go beep boop, beep boop, boop, beep boop, and it will sync itself to this thing. And pretty much anything you can do from here, for the most part, you can do there, which I think is cool. Uh, this is separate though. This is It does have 12 volt tank heaters. It's cool that you can activate those right here and you can look at them to see if you, oops, left them on or off. Because if your tanks are empty, you don't want to sit there cooking them, you know what I mean? Um, up top here, it does have uh, LED accent lights, so if you are so inclined, you can use them as a night light. You can get some disco blue going on. Some people like it, some don't. I like the fact that it just looks really nice both ways, and if you have an aversion or preference, you can do whatever works for you. Wolfpacks all use a nice 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Now the juice pack plus, uh, you know, with the battery that it comes with and the 50 uh, uh, watt solar package will keep that running on its own for about a week. Now you've got other lights and things in here you got to remember. But remember this one we've outfitted with a full generator. So if you do really want to go off grid, this RV is more than capable of being super off-grid friendly. We'll come back and look at all the kitchen in a minute. Real quick though, I do want to give you a look up top. You kind of saw it in our sneak peek preview. The uh, the the like giant L-shaped, almost double loft because you've got one above the pantry there, but it has that nice little cargo net space. I think that's a really good, what I'm going to call attic space. And then you have the more traditional uh, loft on the left-hand side. And if you notice, it also has that handy ladder right there. Now the ladder is offset. So it does not at all interfere with this door. Uh, you can pass through here, no problems. Of course, I got to actually, you know, latch that. Um, <laughs> And uh, if the ladder's there, if somebody needs to come in and out of the garage at night to get to the bathroom, you're not going to accidentally dislodge the ladder and cause somebody up top to fall down and hurt themselves, which is, you know, not ever the thing that you're looking for. Now, for entertainment, 
Uh, they give you the option of really expanding to however you want here. So you've got a simple Bluetooth stereo, but it does have some HDMI plugs so we can plug in a Blu-ray or Roku stick or whatever. And they give you just a giant blank space here, throw in whatever smart TV jumbotron monster uh, you want here. A 40 inch would probably fit pretty much no sweat. You'll see that all the countertops are sealed edge thermofoil, even here in the entertainment area. And down below, we have ourselves an electric space heating fireplace. Uh, especially handy if you're in parks or actively running the generator because basically it's heat that doesn't burn up your propane. With the generator on, you're increasing your load and burning a little bit of gas, but hey, you know, you can do either way. Now, if it's going to be really cold, turn on the gas furnace, turn on the generator, uh, or, you know, turn on the fireplace generator if you need to. Uh, you can get a lot of heat pumping into this thing. Now, um, over here, we have ourselves the uh, zebra shades. Some people like them, some people don't. I like the fact that I can control however much light I want, or if I want to, I can roll these things up and I can you know, let a little light in, I can let a lot of light in, I can do whatever I feel like doing on these, or I can line them up and blot all the sun out. And again, you'll notice anywhere you sit or sleep, USB plugs. Now this thing right here, the two end chairs are heat and massage. All three sections, however, our recliner, which is pretty darn nice. So uh, nobody really has a bad seat in the house. Another thing I like about this loft, back to this, I'm sorry. I saw something shiny, I thought I'd come over and look at it. Power outlets up there to, you know, uh, for whoever. I like that it is including a privacy shade, which is something a lot of lofts do not do. Even if you're gonna use it for cargo, you don't want people looking at your stuff. And then if somebody is up here and you're like, all right, kids, lights out, time for bed. And the opposing slide outs here, that kitchen slide, Gives this thing that big open space I think a lot of people are looking for to spend a lot of time in an RV. And the thing is, when you look at it, like you see a blank wall right there. They couldn't really put cabinets on that because the slide opens and closes right there. The good news is, it is not at all short on storage space. They just found a couple different ways of going about it. And we're going to start with a one, two, three punch of drawers, but notice you got a jab and then two right hooks. You got two extra large drawers down below. So your big spatulas and stuff, they like to stop a drawer from opening. You won't have that problem here. Nice big open space here for a wastebasket or bigger pots and pans if needed. That's just wide open. And that skirted black stainless sink gives it just such a cool look. I love the Cherokee subsidiaries that are using that. See the high-rise sprayer faucet that allows you to, you know, hose down somebody like a vagrant who wanders in and sleeps on your... Uh, party couch over there you could give them a cold bath in the morning time get up get out <laughs> which is also the way that my wife likes to wake me up when i sleep in because i do that a lot i i stay up late and i sleep in neat little hand sanitizing station here too although you could probably just as easily hook that up to a bottle of soap have a little you know hand washing station which is nice um around the corner though there's all kinds of funny little pockets and they didn't let any of it go to waste and i like that little alcove right there with that power outlet i think that's going to be a perfect spot for like a little coffee maker corner up top i could see myself doing some kind of like extra gloves or something like that, stuff I wouldn't need or use every day. And then above both the microwave and the refrigerator, you can see that they have some storage pockets, although with that pantry door open, I've got one partially blocked. Something I wanna do here though, that sink cover, I got it out of the way, and I think it makes the perfect side splash over here next to the stove top. Uh, also, this thing right here is awesome, because in a sense, when you flip this up, it's going to act as its own backsplash, so you don't really need that here. What is nice, though, is it gives us a cutting board, a serving station, a prep table, it's lightweight, and when you're done using it, it just magnets up into place, and since it's basically vertical, it's not eating up your storage. Now, that little set of outlets over there, that's easy to miss, but that is super, super handy. Remember, that is a 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That is obviously larger than an equivalent size two-way fridge in terms of cubic foot. And uh, it gives us faster cooling. The RV does not have to be level for it to work. And uh, it is co totally travel safe. You can see over here, I want to get you on a bit of an angle on that pantry so you can really get a good sense of the depth of it. There is a little bit of uh, pocket space, uh, that cabinet door right there. The ladder is kind of in the way. I do like to be fair. When I do see a conflict or something like that, I will still like generally show you how that is, but it's, it's not a major deal considering all of the other storage space that we have readily available within this floor plan, I think. So what do you think so far, everybody? If you've seen something you like or you have a question or something you'd like to see different, leave us a little bit of a comment because that 
feedback is always so so useful now you do have the option of throwing in like a big dinette here if you are so inclined but we've really found this party couch to be the most popular and again those big panoramic windows and i love the ability that if somebody's knocking on the door i have a full viewing window in the door but i can stand right here and see what's going on or if i hear a crash or if i hear one of the kiddos crying I'm right there. I'm in the mix and I can see what's going on. No sweat. Now stepping upstairs here to our bathroom area, we have dual entry doors. They both kind of fold inward right here so that it doesn't matter if you're coming from the bedroom or the hallway. You don't have to go backwards like downstairs or trip over something. And it gives us a nice wide open space. They give us a lot of floor space in this bathroom, which is really nice because I'm a big guy. When I get dressed, I really need that room. And I mean, hold, before I get all the way up top here, let's let's talk leg room because you could do you could do bathroom yoga in here if you wanted to. I don't know that I'd ever want to do bathroom yoga. But I'm just saying that you're capable. And since we're in the upper deck of a fifth wheel, they have the ability to recess the shower pan here, and that means that we have a six and a half foot tall bedrooms or bathroom bedroom ceiling and shower ceiling, which is very very handy for somebody like me. Now you saw how we've almost got like two XL medicine cabinets. I think that one over here, this is kind of intended to be more of like linens, you know, roll up your towels, whereas that's going to be more your personal effects. More sealed edge counters, massive sink. They, they are very good about putting giant sinks in these things. That's something I really like about these. And speaking of big, as we come around the corner, you've got pretty good big bed space here because they're including a form of a king bed in here. So from the factory, we have what I'm going to call a camp king. It's 70 inches wide. It is 74 inches long, so I guess you call it a short king, but look at the space they leave at the base of this thing. So if you want to put a 70 by 80 long king in here, you can do it, and you can still walk around the bed. You don't have to choose, do I either walk around the bed or do I get a king? You can have both here if you want, but a wide bed like this, and people tend to sleep on their sides, usually have plenty of room to just curl up. Second air conditioner is standard on a big Wolfpack Platinum fifth wheel. And they are both 15,000 BTU Coleman Quiet Airs. So you've got max cooling potential in here. And remember, this RV that we're looking at that has the generator option added to it, it includes a Yamaha like generator key fob. So you could sit in bed if you're warm at night or whatever. You could turn the generator on even if you're boondocking. You could kick the uh, air conditioners plural on because it'll run both and you'll be... Good to go. Now, notice that you have full overhead storage there. But if we take a little bit of a look, you can see you got an easy lift storage chest basically below the bed. And then you've got like dresser drawers on either side stand of this. Now, speaking of the side stands, they're giving us some nice little material there to give you an idea. You have household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. But that top one here, that is actually a dual USB plug. It is also a hub for the uh, uh, drive uh, Bluetooth speaker system. Basically, very, very similar to a Furion lit Bluetooth speaker that you might have seen one of our videos on. So if you're kind of curious about how something like that works, give us a bit of a call here at Halo RV. We'd be more than happy to give you the details on that. Now, if you don't want to use the key fob thing for the uh, generator, you will always find a manual generator uh, start, stop, and prime control over here, as well as your hour meter. So you can see, hey, how long has this thing been running and when do I need to do some service on it? Now, it's not necessarily uncommon, just like this camper. When we have opposing slides, we have like an island or a peninsula or something like this, it pretty much pinches the camper off. Now, that being said, if you're skinny and you can get your butt up over that countertop, you can squeeze through there and the refrigerator at that point becomes pretty travel accessible or you could climb over the countertop. I'm not saying those are ideal solutions. I'm just saying you could do it. <laughs> and then kind of similar, if you came in through that back garage door, you see how close the slide comes to that countertop? If you're skinny, you could slip through there and I think you actually get a couple more inches on that side. And actually, I tell you what, I'm not skinny, but I'm tall enough. I might be able to do that. Let's see if I can do that. All right, and keep in mind, I haven't rehearsed this or anything, so this might blow up in my face, but I think with the door opening inward like this, with the slide closed, there's enough of a gap here, and I'm not going to say this is going to be smooth, but if I do a little sideways travel trailer two-step and <gasps> suck in the dad gut, actually, that wasn't really that hard. I really didn't have to suck my gut in too awful much there, and if we do that, Check this out. We can get in here. 
we can get to the fridge and the freezer in transit. And I'm not saying it's an ideal setup, but the fact you can do it at all in a toy hauler with multi-slides like this is pretty uncommon. And I think a decent feather in this one's cap. I am glad we did this little experiment. And bam, right away, as soon as we step outside, this one's just loaded with features. Like notice the split awning. You've actually got like a, uh, cause you got that big seating slide. They didn't want to bury an awning over the top of it and eat a bunch of that up. So you have an awning in the back for like a private rear patio space. And then you've got a separate awning up front which covers our entry door and our little grilling hookup. Now we've got an anti-slam friction hinge door which is very nice because it's actually kind of dancing in the breeze today. And I want to show you something on this. So first of all, obviously it's not even in the wind slamming shut or anything like that. It's basically a glass front which gives it a great look although we need to clean it. The good news is we will have that camper cleaned before you take it home at no additional charge to you. That's part of our no hidden fees thing we do at Halet RV. Now notice how we have a full viewing window in the door, but like magic, David Blaine cast a spell on this thing and she gone, <laughs> she gone. Uh, I call it the Invisiview door system. It's something all the Cherokee and subsidiary family members of Cherokee do. I think it's pretty awesome. Larger entry handle makes for easy come and go. You see a little pet latch right there. So if you do want to be hanging out under the uh, awnings, plural, <laughs> with the doggo nearby or the cat, you know, there's, I've found there's a lot of, there's a number of cat campers out there I did not realize were RV enthusiasts, you know, and I think that's very cool. Everybody camps. I don't know why I never considered it, but I'm glad I'm aware of it. Now this comes with a floating picnic table. I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned this in the garage, but you can use it in the garage. You can use it in front of the theater seat for like a Dinofa kind of thing. Uh, you can obviously use it out here. You could leave it at home. You could uh, jump off the top rope and deliver an atomic elbow brother like Hacksaw Jim Duggan or something like that. If you are so inclined, of course, that would probably break it. What is nice though, it is the same sealed edge ther thermal foil material here that you get from inside. I'm a little hard on the Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Randy Savage voice right there. I'm <coughs> a little froggy after that one. Now, since last year, it's it's not a very obvious visible difference, but Wolfpack has adjusted their front chassis area. You're gaining a larger front compartment, that big chunk of space that we just saw the camera uh, phase into, that is new. You can see how they're giving us some tie downs in here, which is really nice. A little blue uh, coily hose, I like how it's got the sprayer handle on it. Great for cleaning off your toys and whatnot. But as a back up here, you see why. If you look down below, this actually has a mini drop frame. You can see how the chassis actually dips right there. They did that so that they could include generator prep or the optional generator that we're looking at right here today while still having storage access above and place for your batteries over there. There's also things like your solar charge controller located in that little compartment, but let's talk this guy. I gave you a pretty quick primer on it. Ooh, you get, man, she's shiny. You can see a little reflection. Good thing I'm wearing my hat. My bald head off that reflection would create like a reflection feedback loop and blind you. Ooh, we lucked out today. But Everybody and their brother seems to be using a 5500 Onan generator, and there's nothing wrong with it. it frankly, it's great. Onan's just down the street from us. They've done good work for us for customers before, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of them. I am really excited, though, to see that Yamaha inverter generator installed in the front of this for a lot of reasons. Uh, it is lighter weight, so there's less pin weight on the front of this thing. There's less dry weight overall. It has a, a remote key fob, just like your car. So like if you want to sit in bed, you can just grab a little key fob and you can turn that thing on and uh, you don't you know, have to walk up, you don't have to go to your master control panel. Not that it's hard, it's just cool that you don't need to. Um, it, with the inverter, it will power up all the uh, outlets in the RV. I mean, it, it does a lot of things. It is quiet, it, is, uh, it uses less fuel, it costs less to work on, and we are a Yamaha certified uh, generator dealer here at Halet RV. That means we are certified to work on the generator. So that is something that, you know, isn't really discussed a lot in the RV business. I never really thought about talking about it previously, but the generators that come in most RVs, you have to be certified to work on. And, uh, you know, we do our best to help customers out where we can, but this one, we don't have to ask questions. We can just get it done. Now this is a 102 inch max width wide body camper. I want to point that out because when you are in a 102 inch body, just like this Wolfpack, you tend to run on a wide body chassis. That means more structural stability, more towing stability because your foundation is just as wide as the body. Some, many actually, 100 inch wide body toy haulers 
tend to still run on an eight foot standard body chassis. It makes them a little tipsy in towing. It's hard for you to see that though. Uh, one of the easy ways you can tell is look at the jack legs. If they're kind of like on the outside of the frame supports like that, it's usually a wide body chassis. Black tank flush over there. Up top on the slide, you'll see that all the slides are slide awning ready should you choose to apply those. The Wolfpack kind of has two divisions. There's Wolfpack Platinum that we're looking at and then Gold Series, which is more their travel trailers. And they're very easy to tell apart because the Platinum Series has the gorgeous high gloss fiberglass skin that we're looking at here. The Gold Series on those travel trailers has the common corrugated aluminum skin. Uh, it is primarily just a cosmetic variance, but it does the job pretty well. Now, if I get down here, it does have an enclosed heated underbelly. What is also really nice is this does standard have 12 volt tank heating pads to give you that extra layer of protection that you know a little peace of mind never never hurt anybody's feelings on the flip side of that gorgeous high glossy glass slide out right there right behind it we've got our water hookup kind of place right here they keep the water and electrical stuff separate on these which i know a lot of people like now you've got a full outside shower here this is hot and cold this is kind of for personal use right here you have a cold water only sprayer port and you're kind of going why are they in the same spot? This is to like clean up your toys and stuff like that. It has that little garden hose sprayer, so it's kind of like a higher pressure thing. This is for like your personal kind of body cleanup situation going on here. Hot and cold water, a little lower pressure. Not gonna like, you know, sting your skin when you're blasting yourself with it. Good looking aluminum wheels on these two. And one of the other things that's nice, even though they have an expanded uh, front uh, storage now, they are still giving us a separate sewer hose tube to keep the stinky slinky kind of under control. And all of the jacks on Wolfpack Platinum are always going to be all power. So you've got power front leveling jacks, power rear stable and a uh, standard 30 gallon fuel station right here that does share a cell with the generator up front so if you do want separate fuel for your toys you're gonna want to kind of plan ahead on that the always-on side mount ladder is something that's been on these wolf packs for a couple years and I'm very glad to see it uh, and we'll actually get up that ladder and check out the roof of her in a minute but first a look at the uh, optional patio party deck system and uh, the standard Wolfpack 325 would be just a ramp that just dips down to the ground, and there's nothing wrong with that. What is nice is, of course, this can still do that, but by adding the patio ramp system, you've really maximized the living potential here with that easy set patio deck system. And they are now including a uh, set of steps to get you up and down there quick and easy. And those are some long adjustable legs, so if you really need to retract them to be uh, level with your campsite, you can. Now, if you got a really sharp eye, you look above the garage door there, you will see a full backup camera present within this video. I cannot guarantee that you will see one of those on every single 325 Wolfpack that we have in stock here at Halo RV. At the time of this filming, the manufacturer had a special incentive where any Wolfpack fifth wheel orders included a rear camera and monitor system and these now have standard a tire pressure monitor system which is very cool tpms standard on these now but the rear camera is a limited time incentive thing so if you get one of the the first that was ordered during that incentive bundle well good for you you're going to get a free backup camera after that we have them available here at Halid RV in our parts and service center, and this will always be prepped and ready for a backup camera. Now, we kind of saw the uh, little, you know, pet leash latch up front, but back here, away from the uh, foot traffic, they also got Uncle Josh's drunken uncle leash latch, so that once I have me one too many barley pops, you can keep me away from the passers-by, because I have a way of scaring children's. You know, and while we're standing here, all joking aside, outside TV hookups are nice. You have the same Invisiview entry door back here, but someone's going to ask, why do you have stable steps up front, but no stable steps in the back? Remember that this door goes into the garage. So if you had those stable steps and they folded up into the garage, they would eat up your loading space and conflict with whatever you might be loading here. Very, very uh, tricky to deal with sometimes on a big side-by-side. -side. So these folding steps are actually a very good solution to make a lot more sense back here in the garage area. So Wolfpack's done a good job of really paying attention to who's gonna use this and how it's actually going to be used. And a couple quick notes up here for you on the roof. First of all, you'll actually be able to see the impression of some footprints up here. This RV is fresh off the apple cart, basically. It is straight from the factory production line. The glue under the roof adhesive here hasn't really settled yet. So over time, that will actually kind of gravity flow itself down and smooth back out. The footprints that you're seeing are footprints of people like myself and our QC check-in guy uh, checking the trailer out as it lands here at Halid RV. So those will pretty much smooth out uh, over time since the glue hasn't fully cured yet. Neat little LCI Wi-Fi hotspot point here. One of the things I like about it 
is the screws to be able to attach the thing. They're actually in the housing itself. You're not screwing into the, <coughs> pardon me, oh my gosh. <coughs> Literally choking on thin air. <coughs> You're not screwing into the RV construction. So installing this won't void any kind of warranties. Now this has the Cherokee juice pack on it, which is primarily basically like a battery tender system. It's a 50 watt solar package, which doesn't sound like much. And it's not the biggest package available out there, but you know what? It's not terribly expensive and pound for pound, it does a monster job on this thing. Because like running all the slides, the lights, the awnings like we've been doing just for this video, it's all being done just off the uh, battery and solar panel that comes with this camper. And it's actually maintaining its voltage on a decent sunny day like today. So it is replenishing what we are using during this video. And keep in mind, look at the duration of this video and multiply that by three or four. And that's about how long it takes to put all this footage together while I'm out here. So it's been cooking for a long time. Now you can see the dual air conditioners. Those are dual 15,000 BTU airs, not a smaller 13.5. They're both the big AC units. Notice that they're both the Coleman uh, quieter air conditioners and they both have white shrouds. You notice how pretty much everything up here that they can has a white skin on to help keep the sunshine out. So when you are hot camping, you're gonna stay comfortable here. And I think that's probably a more realistic view of how a toy hauler is going to be used. We talk a lot about cold camping and all these different things, but frankly, 99.9% .9 of us are really more concerned with hot camp climate type stuff. But yet with things like the 12 volt tank heaters and the underbelly enclosures and stuff, Wolf packs are still pretty well protected, so if you are going to go out in those early spring, late fall seasons, it's a decent brand to take care of you. So thank you very much for hanging out with us today. If you appreciate the information, I really would appreciate if you left us a comment. Tell us, what did we do good? What did I miss? Do you have any questions? What can we do better? We're always looking to improve. And we really would appreciate the opportunity to earn your business here at our family owned and operated dealership. And it doesn't matter if you live close or far away. We only do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Until next time, we'll see you soon.